Hello and welcome to the NevilleResearch.com video. So today I want to look at something fun. Uh, Shane Devine posted this on Twitter and I thought this was really insightful. So he says, Shakespeare authorship controversy could be seen as classist, but it could also be seen as the epitome of bourgeois ideology to insist that bourgeois conditions once produced the best poet of all time and could do so again, despite it doing everything in its power to erode culture. And I think this is really interesting. And so I sort of interpret this, the point of this, that there's this sort of claim that Shakespeare came from nothing and received a very minimal education, but was still able to create works of genius, and that this is somehow a good thing, a good sign. Of course, that's one positive way to look at this, but there's also a very dark interpretation of this, that people should just pick the, themselves up by their bootstraps, and they don't need a university education to do great art or to do great things and that anybody has that potential and or excluding people from opportunities really doesn't matter because they're supposed to be able to achieve greatness just like William Shakespeare. So there's a dark side to this sort of argument made for Shakespeare. And then this whole classes thing is like the number one trope now in defense of Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare. So there's no facts and evidence to support Shakespeare's ability to write the plays and poems. So instead, people like to say that it's classist to suggest that he couldn't write them. Okay. Um, here's, here's a very good example. So nothing worse than Shakespeare truthists. I guess I'm a Shakespeare truthist. Classist as a F. Oh, son of a lowly glove maker could never be so poetic. And, you know, the truth is that Shakespeare was essentially the son of the mayor of his town. He came from a well-off family. His mother inherited property. His father was well-off. Shakespeare himself was a very successful businessman and built on his inheritance and died a very wealthy man. He was a landowner. Uh, his father became a gentleman when he was in middle age, uh, when Shakespeare was in middle age, and then so Shakespeare became a gentleman himself. So the whole idea that Shakespeare is from some low-class background or poverty or anything like that is completely false. It's ridiculous. And so this whole classist thing is partly based on a misunderstanding of the history and if we look at um, sort of Shakespeare's contemporaries, um, Ben Jonson came from actually a low, probably a lower class background than Shakespeare, um, and you know had family difficulties, but um, he studied. He didn't apparently go to university, but he did did study at the Westminster School under William Camden, the great antiquarian and scholar of the time. So Ben Jonson had this really outstanding education and then, of course, continued reading and studying books his whole life. He had a vast library and we still have many of those books extant today. Um, and there's a lot of research been done on that, on identifying those books and often he would write his name in them. And then Christopher Marlowe came from a much lower class background than Shakespeare, but he, had, he attended Cambridge university and it's sort of a misunderstanding of the early modern period many people of lower class backgrounds than shakespeare attended university and um people of his background many many people attended university so it's not a class issue at all here that that we're dealing with the issue is not of class the issue is of education the issue is of literate background. The issue is of knowledge of foreign languages. These are the issues that surround the Shakespeare authorship question. 
it has nothing to do with class. Now, obviously, I think that Henry Neville wrote the works of Shakespeare, and he did have a incredible education. Now, was it a university education? Well, he did go to uh, Merton College, Oxford for one year, but what's more important is that he went to Europe with his tutor, Henry Savile, and they traveled in Europe for four years. And we have very strong evidence that during that period, he was inv involved in a very heavy study of classical literature, Greek and Latin, that he was, he learned Italian, he learned French, he was reading, definitely reading books in Italian. Um, and we even have some examples of this. So I want to show you, this is uh, Roman Antiquities, the book in Greek, and this is Henry Neville's handwriting. And I, on my blog, I have very uh, detailed explanation of how we can be sure this is his handwriting. It's undoubtedly his annotation to the book. And then this is from a copy of Tacitus, and this is Henry Neville's handwriting. I think it's it's the same handwriting, but it's, it seems a little less mature. And then this is Henry Savile's handwriting. And Henry Savile had a very distinctive handwriting. There's no question. This is his handwriting. And so he's crossed out Henry Neville's mistake here. And he's put uh, the correct answer here. Uh, it's a list of uh, genealogy of some Roman emperors. So Henry Neville was a very high class individual. He was not a nobleman. Uh, you know, technically he was a country gentleman, but he came from a very uh, esteemed background. But it's sort of irrelevant where he came from. The issue is not his class. The issue is his education. And we have edu we have evidence of this. We have very detailed evidence of the books he read, of what he knew, of his skills and knowledge. And all that's reflected in the works of Shakespeare. In the same way, we have Ben Jonson, and we know where his education was, and we know that he continued studying and learning throughout his life, and that's very much reflected in the works. Christopher Marlowe went to university. He was well-educated, even though he came from a very lowly background. So this classes stuff is just... Uh, really, it's a red herring, or you could call it a straw man argument. It's just, it's irrelevant to the question at hand. And it, it, it's just not, a, there is, isn't an issue of class. Who wrote the works of Shakespeare isn't an issue of class. But if you really think about it, it's very funny that many of these Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare defenders are people teaching at, at you know, <laughs> Oxford or Cambridge in England or Columbia University in the U.S., you know, the most elite institutions, the people with, you know, titles to their names and stuff, and they are saying that somehow it's classist to say that uh, Shakespeare did write the works attributed to him. So the whole thing is just a confused mess, and I hope going forward people can focus on facts and evidence and do real research, and let's solve the Shakespeare authorship question. So thanks for coming to the channel. Please click like and subscribe, and tell your friends, because we're going to keep on coming on with great content like this.